Yeah, okay. So let's start. <laughs> uh, so it's the first talk, so. Um, okay, what I want to show are some uh, new features and also maybe some features which are already um, in ADT, but maybe not so known for you. For sure, one of the um, yeah main um, shortcuts that you need in ADT is um, to open a development object. So normally you do this via the control shift A uh, dialog. So this is this one here, uh, where you can easily uh, type in what you want to search, or you can also restrict the search, for example, in case you only want to search uh, for classes or for database tables, things like that. But it's perfect, perfectly um, for opening development objects, but sometimes you also want to uh, need a little bit more interaction with the result set. So maybe some filtering capabilities and things like that. So you want to analyze a little bit more um, which development objects are available. And for that, uh, we now have uh, a little bit improved the uh, search uh, uh, dialogue or the search functionality. So it's very similar. So you also have the possibility here to say, for example, I want to find all objects uh, that belongs to calculators. I also have the possibility here to enter some kind of filters here. So here, for example, you see all the filters that are available. In that case, I want to say, okay, um, I only want to see um, um, data definition sources. So all the stuff around uh, CDS. And then you say search. And then you see the results here in the search result view, more or less. And this is now here permanent, so Control shift a uh, disappears. This will stay here in ADT because this is new. And then you can uh, do uh, other things here. For example, as I already mentioned, uh, you can do some kind of filtering or grouping. In that case, I want to group it here for, let's say, a package. And then you see here that all the objects are uh, grouped by packages. There are also additional um, columns available. For example, you can um, um, display uh, the software component where the objects uh, belong to. This you will see here. For sure, also with um, the possibility um, to uh, sort here this, see the owner, the object type. Um, but you also know that for some objects, you also have some kind of additional need for filtering. For example, um, for example, for for, the, for CDS, you also have some kind of a um, subgrouping uh, for CDS. So we have views, we have entities, uh, all these kind of things. And this is now also integrated here. I will show this here by the grouping. And this is a source called source type that you see here. And then you will see what's happening. So you have now have really a grouping here in the search dialog about these kind of things. So we have abstract entities, we have projection views, view entities. So all these kind of filtering is available here. The same uh, sub-properties you also have in the search dialog itself. So that means when you already have defined a filter for DDLS, there is also then the possibility here to additionally filter for this source type here. Also with um, value help available. So you see all the available uh, sub-properties here in case I only want to search for the custom entity and things like that. So that's more or less um, the idea uh, behind that. For sure, you also have other all the other capabilities that you know that you can trigger on, on, on objects. For example, here, in case you want to trigger an, an ABAP test cockpit run or you want to execute the unit test, all these kind of things are also available here on this list. Or in case you just want to know, okay, what is what is the de definition of that? So you want to see the, the element info, just press F2 on that object and then you will see also the information, whether the columns, things like that. So this is also quite uh, useful to have this capability here in that view. All right, this was it for the um, search view. Now I want to open a class here. So let's go for this class here. We don't need this view anymore, so I can extend a little bit the, the editor here. And then you see also what is also very nice in, 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 in ADT is the capability of having a ABAP doc. So the possibility to really document the class it's a, it, within the editor with this kind of things that you maybe know already from 
from Java world, um, so directly documentation in the source code. And here in the, in the documentation, you also have the possibilities to define so-called links to other development objects with this, um, with this notation here. And also possibility here, can click on that and then you, you open um, this, this class, for example, in that case, it's a uh, database table. Oh, no, it's a little bit slow. All right. And same also works in, in interfaces. So here you see I have really a lengthy um, documentation and sometimes developers say, okay, documentation is fine, but in, in case I want to, to, to edit the class, sometimes it's also a little bit cumbersome because you don't want to see the documentation. And this is also now some new feature that we now have that you can also uh, have the um, folding capabilities as well for commands. For source code, we have it uh, since years, but now you can also have this for, um, for documentation. So you can um, pick this here, or you can also say, um, I want to um, collapse all the, all the commands. And then you see only the first line of this command, which is then maybe some kind of a short description, let's say that you maybe know also from, from other um, workbench tools here. So this is also quite new. And when you click on it, then you see also here in this uh, element info style, also the lengthy documentation that. Okay, that's that's also something new, let's say. Um, then I want to go over to the property view. Property view typically displays you some um, uh, general um, um, properties of, of the object which is in the editor. So things like uh, the short description, or um, who's responsible for that object, uh, all these kinds of things. But now it's also possible, you see it already on the left-hand side, that you can uh, display the transport for that. What does this mean? So this does mean that you now can really find out in case this object is part of an, an, of an open transport request, then you see directly uh, this here, and you can also click on it. And then also the transport requests automatically opens and you see, okay, what, what's to do here. But it's also a um, very interesting feature here, especially when you're working with objects that do not belong to your uh, transports, you, you directly see, ah, okay, so some colleague is currently working on that object because it's locked, things like that. So uh, that's also very helpful. This, by the way, also uh, works for, um, for, for um, let's say all my all my objects. So when I click on the favorite packages folder, I also have this feature here. And then you see um, then all my objects within the packages of my favorite favorites are analyzed and all transport requests are displayed here. So this is also very nice, I think. But I just want to know, okay, where do I have some kind of open uh, requests uh, in my developments or where other colleagues, so it's not only that my transports are displayed because this you can also do by the transport organizer, but in this case, that case, all the transports are displayed that belongs to the to these objects which are part of these packages here. So it's also a quite nice uh, feature that we have integrated here. Then you may also see here, there's also some kind of a, thing here, I think it's not really new, but uh, we just figured out in some kind of meetings with customers a few uh, weeks back um, that there's also nice uh, features in there because this gives you some kind of um, overview about the so some, kind of, some kind of statistics, let's say, about uh, the objects that you have here marked in the Project Explorer. So for example, when I click here on that package here, and then I go here now, a, a, a new um, a new folder comes up, so this this chart feature here, and then you see some kind of statistics here of that package. So how many uh, objects do you have in the category dictionary or core data services or source code objects, all these kind of things. And you can also configure this. For example, when you want to know, okay, in which year are these objects created? So you also get these statistics here or other things. Thing. So all these kind of uh, properties that you know already from the search uh, dialogue that we had uh, in the beginning 
um, all this is now really harmonized over the, the whole uh, IDE. Also, when you're creating a new um, a new repository tree, for example, here, then also the same properties uh, appear here. So this is also now really harmonized uh, over the whole, whole um, uh, ADT uh, tooling here. Good. Now I want to come um, to another area. This is um, version management. So you know, um, when I go back, let's go back into my package here. So you notice already that you have here the history view, and then see you see all the the the, um, the versions that are created when I do a, a transport, or I also have the possibility to have the local history, which is which are all the objects that I changed here on my PC. Uh, every time you're saving, uh, you get a new uh, local history. So it's also quite nice when you say, oh, I did some mistakes yesterday, I want to go back to that version. So it's also very nice. But uh, sometimes you also have the need to compare objects, different objects. So for example, you know, you see this already here in my project explorer. I have also some kind of, uh, let's say, my favorite um, um, history so why are uh, copying this class here so whenever I have some kind of a stable um, stable um, yeah, software state let's say I, I'm sometimes doing some kind of a copy um, and then maybe later on you want to know okay what are the differences between this interface and this interface and this was not possible in the past because you can only compare the same object but now it is also available that you can have here compare with dialog and then you can compare these two objects with each other. And then the yeah, normal uh, comparison dialog comes up here and you can directly see here what are the differences here. So this is also uh, quite nice here. Works also between different objects, which maybe makes no sense uh, at all to compare a report with a class, but in general, it's also possible uh, uh, here. Okay, let's close this. Um, what we also uh, can do is we can also compare objects between several um, systems. In that case, I had this recently, I had in installed uh, the new code part check, so the clean ABAP checks. I had installed on one on one system here, so this one here, so installing via, via ABAP Git. And I did the same on, on the other system and I found some, something is, is, is not the same. And I want to know, okay, what, what are the differences between the implementation in, in that system and the other system? And then I found uh, this nice new fun functionality. So, which is also, let's say, in place since here. So you can compare an object with another project or with another system. But now this is also mass enabled. That means you can mark several objects here. So like I did here for all these classes. And I say, I want to compare this with my other system here. And now this comparison started and only these objects which have really differences will be displayed in the editor. So I know that all the others are exactly the same only in this class here, I have some kind of differences here. And this will, you will see then here in the editor. So, so you don't have to do this sequently. You can do this really with, with one shot and you will directly see um, what are the differences here. Good. What is also sometimes, um, yeah, let's say a problem in, in software development, especially in, in ABAP, where you have uh, all objects in, in one system, um, and you also know that some kind of dependency management in ABAP is not so easy. So we also now have more capabilities here to also um, compare and yeah compare object sets with each other. Object sets, let's say as I set the name, some kind of um, yeah set of arbitrary objects, like for example all objects that belongs to a package or all objects that belong to a software component or a transport re request, things like that. Um, and uh, this you can um, this you can um, configure here. So in that case, uh, I have here all the objects from the packages. I can also say now, I want to analyze uh, objects which are part of the transport request. So I go to the transport organizer. Um, I have this one here. And then I can just drag and drop it here to my um, tool here. And then I see 
all the objects here. For example, when you want to display these objects, you see you have several uh, possibilities here to display objects. Then these objects that are part of this transport are also displayed in the search dialog that you already know from the from the first part of the demo. So same features. Um, that, that we shown before. So this is really one of the central views now in ADT when it comes to displaying um, object sets. Independent, if you're searching or you go via this uh, object set playground, all these kind of things, the results are displayed in the um, in the search view. What you can also do here, for example, in case you have two packages here and you can assume already that these two packages have some kind of similarities, so you can uh, mark both these um, um, object sets and you can also do some kind of an um, analysis of the object relation. So you really want to know okay, whether you have dependencies between these objects. This is done here. So this takes now. So this is uh, done via the um, standard uh, values information that you already know. And then you see, okay, it's clear that you only have dependencies from uh, left to right, because this one is some kind of a reuse library, and for sure you don't have dependencies from uh, left to right. But when you look a little bit on, on that one, you also see, oops, some, some strange uh, behavior here, because here you also have the dependency in the other direction. And this is something that you do not want to have. And so you can click on that and can, can analyze it a little bit more. You can go to the uh, source code and you see directly, okay, a typical um, issue that you have that you, some so per accident, you, you use some kind of type here in that function that you don't extend it uh, or intend it to do. And this is now really uh, very easy to figure out via this uh, tool set here and via the object relation. The same you can also do, for example, for transport. So, you know, transport, uh, you release transports on Friday evening, go to the weekend, and then Monday you figure out, okay, you have some issues. Um, in the in the test system because maybe some some other stuff was not transported and this you can now also analyze with that so for example when i um, have here all the object that belongs to the transport that i want to release i can also compare this here for example with, with this one here and also to see okay uh, what are the relations here and then the same happens here that you also see okay i have some some uh, relations here and this object now belongs to a to a different uh, transport request, or maybe it's not even transported and things like that. So you can also uh, further analyze here then uh, with this tooling before you're doing the transport. That's also uh, some kind of, that you can do here. And again, also all functionalities that you can execute. So for example, here, when you right click here, you can also say, okay, I want to, run my unit test on this object set, or I can also mark both of these uh, object set and can execute or can, ah, okay. What you can also do here, this is what I want to show here, that you can also combine these kind of object sets. When you say, okay, I want to uh, have, I have several object set here. I can also combine this here and make a union set, for example, out of it. So that's also one of the possibilities here. Good. This was it already from, from the object set uh, area. Um, what you also can do, what I also want to mention is that these object set are here stored uh, locally in, in my workspace here, but there are also capabilities to import and export uh, these sets. When, for example, you want to share this with colleagues or you want to um, yeah, store this uh, somewhere on, on a repository, on a file system, or whatever. So there's also the capability to to um, download these kind of things here. Good. This was it from this area. Now I want to change the system because I want to show also a new feature from the uh, various area. Um, that's uh, here. So. Uh, so in the past, when you uh, triggered a uh, values run on an object, you uh, are familiar from the um, from the SEAD that is that you get a pop up where you can filter for the um, object types where you want to search. This was unfortunately not available uh, in ADT, but now we changed that. So with the new release, when you're getting clicking the values, you get the same pop up that you know with these filter capabilities that you can say, okay. 
I don't want to search in type groups. I don't want to search in function groups. But in that case, I want to search for function modules, let's say, and so on. Things like that. And then only um, in these um, categories um, the search are triggered, which directly leads to better performance here because also you get a smaller result set. Uh, you, you know that only in these uh, categories are searched. So this is also one of the one of the features that we now also have in ADT. Having said that, I would say, let's look in some news more in the, the rub area. Therefore, I will hand over to my colleague. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, I will continue now with features from the rub area and more. So first, I need to share my screen. So. Good. Okay, I have here prepared another yeah, class, which I use for the demo purpose. I use it uh, in the area of card, just as an example. And the first thing I want to show is that when you have an object or wrap object or anything, and you have documentation for that, we have seen already that you can have ABAP, comment, uh, ABAP doc comments. But here you have also, for example, um, what we see in the element info is also this parent object. Here in this case, it's also the package where this belongs to. And for this package, for example, I have created a documentation here. Also, this is KTD documented. I can open this documentation. And this is also the way to go when you want to document, for example, your wrap objects. Here you also see, for example, for KTD, um, yeah, you can document it here. But what I want to show is also, you see this is not a source-based editor. Here we can we have also enabled the history view. This is also valid for um, any other form-based object. But the thing is to compare different objects here, different versions. You need to um, have enabled, for example, upper file format. So you need have to have a representation in a text format to compare these both options. So here, when I compare these both, here you see also there are some changes. I added the link to the abacconf here and also some more details. For example, this is just for, for a demo purpose. And this is also the way to go when you want to document, for example, your rub documentations. Here I have here my behavior definition, for example. And then I create, create a new knowledge transfer document to document my business object. So coming back also to the... Um, History view again, you can also see here for which uh, transport, in which transport this was created or the changes were transported. You see here also, I'll collapse it a little bit. Yeah, what I did, and I can also navigate from here to the transport editor to also see here the objects, of course. And the thing I want to show here is also, I have here a lot of different objects. And what was missing now is uh, some code kind of yeah, grouping. You can do this now via this group button and then see, okay, what have I uh, done here? For example, yeah, knowledge transfer document I showed already, I created here. And um, also the classes, for example, here. I can also use here, for example, um, I can also compare with different revision histories, show and copy. Uh, the, the interesting thing is also that you have here the action logs and also the transport logs which is also uh, added to the transport editor here. Um, yeah, next thing, let's move to the demo here. I want to see here, uh, here my demo, car demo. I have here a class run, which I will execute now. And uh, what I see here is in the console that there is something uh, missing, for example, here. I checked if there's in my uh, Audi in my database and somehow this doesn't exist. When I want to drill down for this message, so just for the demo purpose, I can here um, down to my um, debug view, for example, and create, I will move this first, and then create also here a message breakpoint. For example, if I know, okay, where does this message come from? When I know this, I can create a message breakpoint can also happen for your RAP application and your Fiori when there's an error with this message. Um, I can use here the car message. Um, yeah, code completion also works here. Uh, the number 001. 
I don't want to have it as a soft breakpoint. So when I now re-execute this report, it should stop where the message is erased. Here, for example, I select from this uh, database table and then I see, okay, here's this message raised. This is quite useful to find uh, out where this message is raised and, and is used, for example. Here, um, that's a nice feature. And the second thing is now when I just go to this report, I want to, yeah, here's again the message. I will disable this now. Um, what I want to see next is, um, for example, here in this average prices for this cars, something is wrong here. I want to drill down what, what's uh, happening here. For this Ford cars, I can then go to my table. Also, this also works, for example, for your uh, data definitions. But here in my case, I have this table here. I can use the data preview, but sometimes you have a lot of data in your table and then it takes a while until it's loaded. And for that, if you know what you want to see in this table, I can use this advanced dialog here to also pre-configure the filtering. For example, I don't want to see these both columns. Uh, I'm not interested in the color maybe. Yeah, I can select and deselect. What I want to do is uh, I just want to see the manufacturer for the car type of uh, Ford. And when I now uh, open the data preview, I see the pre-selection here. Also, you see on the right-hand side, the filter I have configured. And now I see here also that there's something wrong here with this, uh, with the price here. It's it's negative, this is something wrong. But maybe I want to, okay, I, I won't fix it here. But maybe I want to write a unit test for that uh, in order to avoid this in the future. For that, I can export all of these columns. So when I filter, I know, okay, this is some kind of issue. I can export it as other value statement. And then I'm not able to style, right? Uh, I can do it also here. Uh, copy all rows. Uh, it's also an option here. That's what I wanted. So there are different options. And I want to copy as uh, our value statement. And then I can go back to my class and my test classes and then see, I have already a test here with my uh, test tool framework. And now I have prepared something because what I want to do is if I insert it, I just get the value statement here. Um, I just need to finish this as test preparation. Okay, everything looks uh, right. Now, also another thing is uh, when you have uh, uh, these value statements, also for your EMLs, we have now also the possibility to format it a little bit more. And uh, here I see also the test case here with this negative value. What I want to do in my code is that I expect that it's, it's positive values, the absolute values should be taken. There's just one, one feature where you can copy these uh, rows here. Uh, for the average prices, for example, and you see the case where you have an uh, wrap object. So for that, I have here this example. Of course, we can see now you have for the wrap, in the wrap area, new types here, type table for read, type structure, for action, uh, for action result, and so on. And uh, in the element info, we improved also information about this. So you had in the past all these uh, fields and the structure, but what was missing here was mainly then, okay, what are the components group? Because you have here also for ABAP types, for example, you can have a component group or include other components. But aliases, for example, then you see here a new section with this component groups. For example, when you're a rock developer, this should be known to you. You have a P key, T key, and uh, when you go to that and want to see, okay, what is the P key? You can click on this derived types and then you see, okay, what's the P key? And then you see also for this type, it has also a component group. Yeah. And then click on that and navigate through this additional information. Another cool thing is also that we have now uh, enabled the display of uh, primary and secondary keys. Also, this is not uh, always known for these implicit types here, which you which you define here. 
um, that you have also primary keys here and uh, secondary table keys, which is more interesting when you do a read table, for example, then you know, okay, there's this key entity which has an alias ID and this is uh, for the percentage key component here. And you can, of course, navigate to that and you see, okay, this is the key of, my, of this type. So also in the debugger, so when I execute it again, uh, let's say F F6, I have here some cars, which I have imported here. I can also see this uh, table I want to see again. Here also you have the option, for example, you can also copy as value statement when you have something in the debugger, which looks weird. Just you can also copy this um, and then use in your unit test, for example. And uh, the second thing is when you have here also a rut type, what I have shown also with this groups, uh, you see also here that you can again copy, of course. And when I wanted to show, for example, for an entry here, um, we have seen for an entry, this can have uh, also component groups. You can also see here, show as top level variable as uh, so component group here. You see also the three, you can also uh, yeah, specify in the debugger, for example, the transaction key. And then you have it here as a top level. And then you see also here the percentage C key with this, um, with the fields here and also the percentage control structure. Also for RUB development and debugging, this is very useful. And also, uh, yeah, for, for analyzing also maybe issues or changing some values. So this is then executed and I need to check. Yes. So another thing is also, I go back again to my normal view. Uh, let's navigate to this. For example, I have here my behavior definition because I can navigate to that. Um, I have here the projection view and also I can here navigate, for example, with this control hovering, you see, okay, what are the different navigation targets I have? Also, for example, for the for the actions here, I don't have. I can just navigate to the. I just have when I only have one option. I just can navigate to one target. But here, I see I can navigate to the CDS view, for example, or take some time, or just navigate uh, to the base behavior. So the projection, which is on top of the other behavior definition, the the default navigation when you press F three is the first option you see here. But I want to navigate to the base behavior definition. And here I see uh, also I have the options. For example, when I have here actions, oh, where is it? Uh, I could also navigate to the implementation. But uh, the thing I want to show here is when you have also a complex uh, corrupt object, you can also see in the relation explorer the different options. And also here we have added more possibilities. For example, here I see for the entity of the car, um, here you have also have per default the grouping. So in, in the former time, it was just uh, yeah uh, from top to down, but uh, you can now group them. You see standard operations, uh, functions, actions, and also when you have actions, for example, here the determine action, you see also if it has some elements here. In this case, it's, it's this determination. You can, of course, um, yeah directly navigate to that but it's more interesting to get it, for example, for the action. You can also ne here navigate via context menu to method definition or implementation, for example. There are also other options. Yeah, you can check it out. Um, but these are the major improvements here. Uh, that's one thing. Also, when you have here um, for up, but also for other things, for example, you have classes, you can also see this is kind of where used, using objects. Uh, yeah, um, and used objects, for example. Uh, what, from what am I dependent and what objects are dependent of me, for example. You have also here these options. Here you see also the database table and, and the car also here. So this is also interesting for dependency analysis. Uh, also, what am I de dependent from? This also works for classes, for example, which is maybe more useful. So. Next thing is, when I go back here, 
I did create here, you see also here the comment, it's generated. I didn't create these artifacts by hand. I just had this one table where I define my structure. And what I need is some administrative fields um, for the for Rob objects. And then I can also use here the generate our repository object. And for that, here I see different options. So what I used was the web API service, for example. And this creates me here a, a rough object. You see also there are other options, um, but here you have an easy way, a quick start for rough development, for example. I won't go through it. it. It takes also some time to specify the package. And then when you go to the next page, you see also here some also um, suggestions for names, for example, the data model, the behavior, and you can also change the names and service definition and binding and so on. So, and then when you have it, and then it generates all the needed artifacts and you have a working object here with the preview option. So uh, just a heads up also. So in future we will uh, also create and provide more generators. And also these generators um, will be up to date, for example, here. You will, you will see it will be also context specific. For example, it's not, um, enabled also for all, let's see, for example, CDS, there's no generator, for example. So next is, yeah, I have shown this and then yeah, I'm pretty through it. I think uh, what I wanted to say and show also is that we have new, uh, when you check the welcome page, you can also go through the help, but we have also here in the, on the welcome page, for example, um, edit get the getting started for newbies for ABAP development uh, tools and also uh, which most of you know uh, the FAQs for SE AT experts and also the tips and tricks also there are some also some things we also showed but this is also keeping up to date with the newest and latest development um, here are also some further links which you can check out so with that is there anything you want to add, Thomas? Nope. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. So I think we are through in time. Perfect. Yes, you're perfectly in time. So you have two minutes left if there's something you want to add. But if not, uh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Inald.